All right, so you got $500 right now, either in cash, in a bank account, or on a credit card. And you say, Matt, how do I become a millionaire? Great, that was exactly my scenario just a few years ago. So in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, I'm gonna show you how to be a millionaire with less than $500 in three years. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And I'm encouraging you, if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit notification to be alerted next time we upload our next episode as we're growing and marching towards 10,000 subscribers here. And uh, guess what? You have an opportunity to win a pair of custom Jordans with your brand, your logo, from me to you. But you gotta be a subscriber because we're gonna be picking our random subscribers once we hit and cross 10,000 subs. All right, so before I get into this, let me give you a quick backdrop story of who I am and where I come from. So if you look me up, money smart guy, Matt Zapala, I come from nowhere. I don't come from a, a pedigree. I don't come from a trust fund. I don't come from a college degree. I never went to Harvard, never went to Wharton, never went to Stanford, none of that stuff. Uh, I'm very happy. I've got many videos out there. I'm very happy with my PhD, however. I'm very happy with what the education of my public high school diploma gave me. But that's the extent of my education. My education was the law of common sense, the university of, of hard knocks. Uh, I, I just went through life. Our family immigrated here from the Philippines. Uh, as many, many of you know, the, the Filipino mantra uh, is either you become a doctor, you become a dentist, attorney, accountant, or engineer if you're a male. And if you're a female, you have one job to do as a Filipino uh, a woman growing up. You either become a nurse or you're outcast from the family. I'm just kidding, but uh, that's kind of like the stereotypes. The reason why stereotypes are funny is because they're true. But uh, anyway, make a long story short, I've always been the black sheep of the family. I've always been opposite of what everybody in my family and friends uh, would want me to do or would like me to do. And uh, that's the same thing when I went into high school. I wanted to play football. I wanted, I wanted to play sports. I didn't want to get into music. Everybody in the Filipino community wanted me to get involved in music. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm 6'3", uh, I'm, even though I'm 165, 165, skinny as a rail. But when I was going through high school, I still loved sports. I grew up with Michael Jordan. I grew up with Walter Payton. I grew up with all the Chicagoland sports. So I, I wanted to be somebody like, like, like where the bright lights were, would shine and you get that recognition, you go out there and live a life. And I was always frustrated because when I left for the Marine Corps, I'm limited on $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marine Corps. Constant limited, constant limited, constant limited. So I find myself in a position where, yes, I'm not going to re-listen to the military. And thank God somebody recruited me into an industry, thought enough of me to bring me into an industry where I thought it was only reserved for the wealthy. And I started figuring out why the rich are getting richer, why the poor are getting poorer, why the multicultural middle class is still getting poorer, and why over time certain people absorb money and why certain people also lose money over extended period of time because my biggest frustration was I spent 10 years in the military, eight years on active duty, two years in the reserves, and I added it all up. I did the math. Uncle Sam paid me $250,000 of salary. And now it sounds like a lot of money, but stretched out over a 10 year period. And guess what I had to show for? Zero, nothing, nada, wala na. So by the way, that's Filipino for those of you who don't pick it up. So I had nothing left to show for. I have, I have nothing but a car full of stuff. I had my son, my, my kids with me. And that's all I had to show for. I said, you know what? Enough is enough. How do I live a life that I've been reading about, that I've been seeing about? And guys, this was the area, uh, uh, the era before social media. So I was just seeing magazines and I was seeing movies and I was seeing all these different things. I was living in Orange County in the, in the Marine Corps. And I'd see these guys driving on their boats, their jet skis, driving Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I'm like, how do I get a piece of that? I'm sick and tired of somebody else living that life. I want to live that life. I want to have my kids uh, going to those schools. I, I want my family living in those type of homes. So. That's the big motivation of why I figured out I need to become a millionaire because the life I wanted to live, the life I wanted to ha have an experience for the rest of my life, I need to make a lot of money. So I'm gonna talk about how to become a millionaire in this episode. All right, so if you wanna become a millionaire with less than 500 bucks in three years, the first thing you gotta understand, man, is get your mind right, okay? Get your mind right. What am I talking about? Ask yourself this question. Why do I want to become a millionaire? Why do I want it? Is it because I wanna prove somebody wrong? 
Is it because uh, uh, um, there, there's somebody uh, uh, that's constantly pushing me? I, I'm getting tired of my back being pushed up against the financial ropes of life. I want to play some offense for once. Uh, I demand a better lifestyle. I want my children and my family to have options. Uh, the last 100 decisions I've, I've had to make in the last 30, 60 days has been somewhat related to money. Like every time I make a decision, an inclusion of the variable of money is always in there. I just refuse to make a decision with money being a variable because here's what I found. When I wanted to make a decision for the betterment of my family, for the betterment of my future, for the betterment of my life, I realized that every decision I was making, where I wanted to eat, where I wanted to live, the lifestyle I wanted to live, had a variable of there being money. Healthcare, education, travel, there's always a variable of money. Like I was making a decision, boom, I can't do it because finances, boom, I can't do it because of, of, of my financial situation, my money situation. When I'm looking at the life I want to live, I said, you know what? I, I also not only want it, but I got something to prove. I got something, I, I got something to say, you know, fam, I, I deserve this, you deserve this. I, I believe, call it corny, but I believe every generation has this one big decision to advance that generation of that family forward. So my parents, our family coming from the Philippines, had their big decision of leaving everybody they knew in their 20s, leaving everybody they knew that they grew up with in their comfort zone to come to America to have a better life. And I just feel maybe it's corny on my end, maybe you might pick up on this, I don't know, let me know in the comment section below. But I just feel that in my generation, first generation born Filipino American here in the, in, in the, the Chicagoland area, in the United States of America, I have a contribution. What's my big decision? So my big decision was, I thought was to enlist into the military, to serve our country. To not be a burden on anybody, not be a burden uh, on my family, my, my, my parents, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles. Uh, and using the GI Bill to potentially pay my way through college and advance my life to figure out what type of career I wanted to have afterwards. But I didn't realize, I, as life unfolded, I became a single parent. I could not wait three, four, five years for a, hopefully a college degree to complete, to hopefully make me more remarkable to get a potentially higher paying job four, five, six years from now. I couldn't wait, I needed to pay bills today. So, boom, if you wanna make a million bucks, why do you want it? Number two, do you think you deserve it? You know, oftentimes I see people, as, as much as you, you, you have the fear of failure, you know the opposite is true, there's also a fear of success. Like I see so many people shoot themselves in the foot, uh, theoretically speaking, not physically, not realistically speaking, but, but theoretically speaking, they shoot themselves in the foot or they stand in their own way. Man, they just made 100 grand, boom, well, well you can make 200,000, I don't know, I don't think I don't deserve it, why? Don't you, do you think you deserve more? Number three, are you willing to work for it? Man, I wanna make a million bucks, but you know what? I wanna do it simple. I wanna sit behind a laptop, type a couple things, and hopefully uh, without strategy, hopefully without mentorship, hopefully without accountability, I'm gonna make a million bucks by selling a couple things online and make a million dollars. Yeah, you'll make some money, but unless you're willing to work for it, that's about it. Next one, adopt processes and proof of concept. Do you want to adopt a blueprint? Do you want to use a proof of concept, or are you just trying to wing it and trying to make a million bucks, especially with $500, especially in less than three years? Or do you want to extend trial and error, extend trial and error 10 to 20 years? Or do you want to follow a proof of concept and adopt the process? Listen, the fastest way to make a million bucks is to follow somebody who's made it already and do it sooner and faster than they did. Your greatest thank you is somebody who's willing to teach you and coach you, or somebody who's laid out a blueprint, your, your blueprint. The greatest thank you you have for, for them is to do exactly what they've done, but sooner and faster. What about the next one? Are you willing to go opposite? Listen, let me ask you a question. If you make a million dollars, okay? If you make a million dollars, would you be the first person in your entire family to be a millionaire? Would you? I mean, some of you watching this video, maybe you come from a millionaire family, well, God bless you. But for the 80, 90% of the multicultural middle class that's out there, that probably like myself, you weren't surrounded by anybody that made $100,000 a year, you weren't surrounded by anybody that made $200,000 a year, at least legally. You were surrounded by anybody in your family that made a million dollars a year that can adopt for you the, the principles and values and lessons and experience that they learned in that process, in that journey, right? Unless they're willing to teach you and train you, or you had somebody like that in your family, chances are you're out on an island all by yourself going, going opposite. And that's why your friends and family and people closest to you, your coworkers or the people you, or you went to college with, your fraternity, your, your sorority, or in my case, the military, your, your, your veteran family, they may not understand you because making a million dollars seems like so way out of the ballpark for them. Because he, he, truth be told, he, he, here's, here's a list of the type of people that make money in our country. Notice the people make 10% income in our country. Notice the people make 5% income of the top 5% income in our country. Look at the people that make the top 1% of income in our country. Now, do you know anybody, at least in the 1% income in your entire family, that's not even a million bucks yet? 
But if you say, listen, I want to become a millionaire, you have to understand that my mindset is already pointed and shifted and directed towards something opposite what everybody and my friends and family are currently doing right now. And that's why I'm weird. That's why I'm different. And that's okay. Stay encouraged. And that's why you need to make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's more of a community out there that are thinking bigger, that are wanting more out of life, they're willing to do more, and more importantly, willing to be more. Okay, so let's talk about the method and the math to how to become a millionaire. So there's five different ways. Robert Kiyosaki wrote this book, Why the Rich Are Getting Richer. And by the way, if you haven't read his original book, which is Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I suggest you do. But uh, I really resonate with Robert Kiyosaki. Look forward to meeting him one day. By the way, <laughs> Robert Kiyosaki, if you're watching this video, somebody shares it with you. I hope to interview you one day. I hope to have a conversation with you today. Look forward to you. changed my life. I read that book in 1999 and the way I looked at money differently. Talk about going opposite. The way I looked at money differently was because of me reading your book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad when I was a lifeguard at the YMCA from five to eight o'clock in the morning trying to get this business, trying to get my business up off the ground in my transition out of the military. But let's talk about the, 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 the methods here. There's five methods he talked about in his book, Why the Rich Are Getting Richer, and how to make a million dollars. First method, you become a CEO, or you become an athlete, a pro athlete at that. You become a high paid entertainer, okay? And so in this process of, of this, here, here's what I realized about my life. I don't have a college degree. So if I don't have a college degree, let alone getting a master's or a PhD, my steps in my life, because of a lack of formal education in college and, and secondary uh, 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 post, postgraduate education, there's nowhere near I'm gonna be on, on the CEO track. My track in my life is not the C-suite, chief this, chief operations, chief financial, nothing, let alone chief executive officer. So I already knew for me, my path was not there. And on top of that, you can't do that with less than 500 bucks. You can't do that with less than three years. You're, you're talking about a 15, 20 year track of finally becoming a CEO. And that's assuming that whatever company you're working for, that the CEO gets paid a million dollars. Well, let's look at being an athlete. That's one way to make a, a million bucks. I mean, you're good in sports. You're, 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 good, uh, you're, you're a good comic. You're a good uh, um, uh, actor. You're a good uh, person writing songs. You, you're, you're an artist. You can do that. By, by that, but here's what I realized, and for the majority of people watching this video too as well, you don't have much of an education, you have much talent. So number two, second way to make a million bucks, you can get lucky, right? You can marry the right person. You can scratch off at the gas station, the right lottery ticket. You can play Powerball, you can do all these different things. You can get lucky, but here's the thing about luck. It's not predictable, it's, it's a game of chance. I would like to find an opportunity for me to make a million bucks with $500 in less than three years. That's systematic and predictable. And I want to remove luck as a variable of me becoming fortunate enough to make a million dollars. All right, so let's talk about some meat and potatoes on, on different methods and different ways to become a millionaire. Number three here is net worth millionaire. So what do we mean by net worth? It means you're a paper asset, paper millionaire. You have illiquid cash assets. So in other, in other words, your money is on paper. You're what we call uh, asset rich, but you're cash poor. Let me explain. Let's say you go out and buy your first piece of property, okay? Now, I don't know what type of property you might buy for less than 500 bucks, but I'm sure there's a ton of gurus out there that shows you how to buy tax liens, that shows you how to buy a property with no money down. By the way, that's one of the ways I bought my own, one of my properties with no money down. But there's a ton of content, there's a ton of ways and methods out there to buy real estate with little to no money down. But here's the thing, this, this process here requires the most amount of leverage. In other words, you have to be in a position of borrowing. You have to be credit worthy. You have a lot to be able to prove to say, listen, I'm worthy to be lent this type of money so I can invest in this piece of property, in this, in this case, real estate. And you might buy a house, a single family home, and then you might over a period of time sell that home. You might, might, and then you might want to buy some apartment buildings. But so in this situation, let's say over a period of time, over these next three years, one, two, three, over a three year period, you buy $2 million in assets $2 million of property, you've taken one property, rolled it to the next one, so you basically have $500,000 total of down payment. You took 500 bucks, rolled it to the next property, rolled it to the next property, and, and have, in, in, in terms of your down payment over those three years, $500 of money inside the property, right, of down payment to qualify for the mortgage, to qualify for the loan. So if you do the math, the, the property is worth $2 million. You put down $500,000 $500, of total down payment, now on paper, you're worth $1.5 million dollars. What's not accounted for this, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be commenting uh, 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 commenting on that below, is the holding costs, the taxes, the property repair, the maintenance, eviction. So there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on with being a net worth millionaire as it relates to real estate being a method, being a strategy for you to be a net worth millionaire. But that's just one of them. Let's talk about number four, capital gains. We call buy and sell. 
That's, you have to constantly do that using this type of strategy, this type of method, and you always have to have inventory. It's also driven by the market. So in other words, if I buy something low, I hope the market drives this, this asset that I purchased, so therefore I can sell it at a higher price. I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the things I love, one of the things I just started getting involved in was, was baseball cards. I'm buying Michael Jordan's baseball uh, 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 rookie card. I'm buying uh, uh, Kobe Bryant's. I'm buying, I just bought uh, Walter Payne's card. Uh, there's so many of my favorite players. I'm just, it's like a hobby slash investment for me, uh, especially after watching my mentor, Patrick and David, have, have about $1.5 million of baseball cards shown in front of me. One time we had a meeting, he bought the two Wayne Gretzky's Wayne Gretzky rookie cards. He basically bought the holy grail of hockey baseball, hockey baseball cards, hockey uh, uh, rookie cards, which is Wayne Gretzky's two cards. There's only one other card that's, uh, that's out there. That's a strategy, that's a method. You can buy a baseball card low, hold it, the market drives it high, then you sell it at a higher price. Same thing, th same thing too here with uh, people with real estate. You can fix and flip. Buy low, put some money into it, flip it for a higher price, boom, there's profit. Now here's the thing too, the key of becoming a millionaire with less than 500 bucks in, 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 in three years is make sure that you're not living on your money too soon, right? Make sure you're constantly reinvesting your money back into the machine, you feed the beast. The biggest problem why people aren't millionaires is because they make one or two, three big sales and they start living a life already. They start buying a too, uh, uh, too big of a home, they start buying the Lambos, they start buying the Ferraris too soon. Uh, matter of fact, when we started making money, our, my mentor, Patrick Bidet, said, hey, Sheena, Matt, why don't you go, guy, why don't you go buy some cars? Why don't you go get some, you know, have some toys? You know, it's for marketing purposes, right? It says, you know what? We're, we're at that time we we're broken, uh, uh, driving a broke, uh, uh, a broken door on our on our Cadillac Escalade. Every time we open it up, it's go pop, pop, right? You close it, pop, pop, open it, pop, pop, close it. It was just embarrassing. So, babe, you know, babe, it makes sense to buy a, a new ride. Um, it makes us feel better. It makes us feel accomplished. It makes us charged up. And it, there's like an emotion. I said, hey, this is a goal we reached. We're emotionally charged to get to the next level. So maybe those things that uh, you need to do along the way, but not too soon, not too fast. So capital gains millionaire, what about Bitcoin? Right now, if you buy uh, uh, Bitcoin, the downside with Bitcoin, it's not 500 bucks. For one Bitcoin, it's $8,649 based on uh, the recording of this video. What about gold? Well, per ounce is $1,471 per ounce. So at 500 bucks, you're not gonna get very much anywhere. You might buy a fraction of a Bitcoin, buy about a fraction of an ounce of gold. You buy at a lower price, then you buy at a higher price. That's your capital gain, and that's what happens uh, in that process. There's a cycle, what happens there uh, when you are a capital gain type of millionaire. The downside to that, least amount of leverage. You can't find a source of credit. It's very difficult to find a source of credit. It's very difficult to uh, borrow money from other uh, either people or institutions to get them to, to buy into your to buy into this product. So the least amount of leverage here is on capital gains type of uh, strategy and, and type of method. The highest amount of leverage in terms of borrowing and leveraging your money is through, through real estate on the uh, net worth uh, method. Last but not least here is become a cash flow millionaire through sales and putting time and effort. Either you do it individually or build a team to do it. So in this example, you have a product. You've got a service. For, for example, you sell one, one of these products, whatever it is, let's say you have a high margin type of product, okay? The margin of this product is $2,500 per sale, okay? So you sell this one product individually yourself, your commission on it is $2,500. So let's do the math. So if you do one sale equaling $2,500 in commission, all you know now is 400 sales, guess what? Now you make a million bucks, but you gotta sell 400 of them, that's the math. Whether you do that in a year, whether you do that in two years, whether you do it in three years, it's totally up to you. You can compress time frames based on what? Time and effort, or you can extend the time over you know, 24, 36 months to get that done. Or you can say, you know what, instead of my 24 hours, my individual time, I can say, you know what? Let me recruit, hire, build a team like real estate brokers do like law firms do when they hire junior associates, junior attorneys, like, like tax preparations or architecture firms, engineering firms, they hire the, the senior engineer hires a junior engineer or in like insurance brokerages, there's a, a, the, the main general agent broker and he has associate brokers. So there's many methods in, of, of doing that in terms of building a team. So in this situation, this, in this uh, scenario, you got 20 junior associates working for you on your team. Every time they sell something, let's say they make the $2,500. Okay, they're happy about it. And you make your $500. Okay, from selling, from you supervising, coaching, teaching, training them how to sell that one product, they make $2,500 in that situation, or, or it depends on how much you, commission you wanna pay out. Let's say, let's say they make 2,500, you make 500, or they make 2,000, you make 500, whatever, however you wanna chop that up. So in this scenario, you make a $500 commission by leveraging a team. So in this other, this other you have a financial leverage, uh, a real estate and capital gain, you have financial leverage in a product or service, you could potentially have human time leverage Okay, you have more man hours going out there selling your product or service uh, uh, on your behalf. Scale, 
Okay, this is what we call scale. So in this scenario, you have 20 salespeople either going door to door, either cold calling, uh, uh, you have a sales team inside calling on internet based uh, type of leads. And every time they sell something, they make a $2,000 or $2,500 commission, but you organizing the whole thing, you make a $500 commission. So let's do the math. So if you have 20 salespeople and you have $500 in commission for each sale, you basically need 2000 sales. Let's further the math some more. Those 2000 sales divided by 20 people on your team, that means that 20 of your guys need to make hundred sales each. When they do, when 20 guys make hundred sales each, guess what? You're now a millionaire. That's the method and that's the math. So let me go, let me go throw back something real quick. When I found myself as a single father with three kids, raising them with custody, here's what I realized. I needed to make a lot of money. And to further help you with the math in your city, in your state, go to this website called epi.org, economicpolicyinstitute.org. And under resources and under family budget calculator, type in your city, type in your county, and type in the household that you have. So in my scenario, I have a single father with three kids. You know what I realized? To live in the city of Chicago as a single parent with three kids, guess what I needed to make? I need to make over $90,000 a year just to keep my head above water based on the standard of living to live here in the city of Chicago. So the math told me I need to make better decisions where I place my time, my career, I just couldn't settle because either I provide the, the lifestyle and, the, and, and the, the options for my family that I would love to and that the minimum requirement is $90,000 and above or I just settle for a $40,000, $50,000 a year job and I'm gonna settle for the rest of my life and I'm gonna be frustrated. I'll be like a caged lion wanting things but I can't get it. Why? Because I'm living with my job. I'm frustrated, why? Because I just made the wrong decision. So me allowing myself to see the math allows me then to drive the decisions I need to make to make the lifestyle I want to have for my family. Okay, so far we've covered that you need to get your mind right, you need to get your method and your math correctly, and now you need strategy. So no matter what method you pick, based on the math you figured out for you, you need a strategy. And you need what I call, what I call the three C's. You need to get capital, which is 500 bucks, or you might invest that capital, that 500 bucks, into getting you some credit. Uh, you might want to get some business line, you want to invest in a corporation where you can establish a business line of credit. You want to extend your personal line of credit. You want to invest in a course that teaches you more of that stuff with that $500 in issue. So it may not be necessarily an investment, but you invest into a course, into an information product, into a book or a course that gives you the stra further strategies, further methods, and how to become a millionaire based on one of these areas that you've chosen for yourself. So number one, how to invest smartly that capital. You got to figure that stuff out. No matter what you invested that capital in, guess what you gotta start doing then? You better start making money. You gotta have cash flow. So you put some money in, it's a little small capital investment. You gotta make sure if I'm gonna invest this money, the reason why millionaires are millionaires is because they have a mindset of what's my return on my investment? How soon can I get my return on investment? So if I put 500 bucks into this thing, how soon can I make money? How soon do I get a direct deposit? How soon can I get a transaction? How soon do I get a result that puts money in my bank so I can reinvest back into, back into the business, back into the, back into the machine. And the third thing here, you need contacts. You want to start with friends and family, you want to start with colleagues, you want to start with coworkers, past coworkers, you want to start with people that you uh, went to college with, your fraternity, your sorority, the people you serve in the military with. You want to start with those contacts. Hey, hey buddy, I don't know if you know this, but I started a company, I started some real estate, I start, you know, you know whatever, I'm, I'm, whatever method it is I'm doing. I started this type of uh, uh, type of method in my life because I want to become a millionaire. Now you probably never do business with me because we went to school together. But if you know somebody that's in your second or third generation or second or third degree away from me, that is in the same scenario that I found myself in, and we can connect, we can vibe. Please think about me. I'm your friend. I'm your family member. That's the way you can support me. And lots of times, some some of your friends and family say, you know what? Tell me more about what you're doing. So therefore, I could be more educated. Who knows? I might even be interested in becoming a customer. That's the way I launched my business off the ground. You know why? Because when I started with no credit, with, with very little money, with no credibility, I started asking people I went to school with when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. I started talking to my teachers. I started talking to my coaches. I started shaking hands. I started going to Chambers of Commerce, which we'll talk about here in a second. And I started getting the word out. And people said, you know what? You got a product, you got a service that, you know what? 
let me let me uh, let me find out more about what you do. Like on social media today, like I, I I raised my business without social media. I was raising my business with without social media. But today, if I had social media, I'd be doing Facebook lives, Instagram lives, talking about my product, my service, showing some value, showing people that I'm excited and fired up about my future, where I'm going, and being consistent at it. Whether you do it once a week, once a month, being consistent at it over an extended period of time. Because people, if especially with no credibility, like I like where I came from, or or you have a little bit of credibility. People want to see whether or not you're for real. And so you just can't be the type of person, I'm gonna jump from here, jump from here, jump from here. Pick one, stick with one. So let's, let's, let's continue to talk about strategy. Speaking of strategy, you gotta pick the right industry. You gotta make sure that whatever product or service or method that you're going to use, it's a wealthy industry. That you're gonna make money in that industry. How many times have you heard somebody say, okay, if you're gonna to go to college, study this, because people that have that type of degree, people that have that type of degree, they have this type of job that pays them a lot of money. So go study that. Well, the same thing is true if you want to become a millionaire. If you want to become a millionaire with 500 bucks in less than three years, you've got to pick an industry that's already predisposed for anybody getting involved in it to make a lot of money. So let me give an example. There's a book out there called The Blue Ocean Strategy. So the premise of the book, The Blue Ocean Strategy, I'll make it as simple as possible, is there's one ocean. There's two types of oceans. There's one ocean. It's red. It's got blood in it. Why? Because there's sharks, because everybody's in there. Everybody's trying to swim, everybody's trying to rescue themselves, everybody's trying to get the peace. But the only people getting the peace are the sharks. The opposite is true. There's a blue ocean, calm waves, calm seas, no sharks, and primed for disruption. And everybody is not even paying attention to this industry. See, that's the industry you want to focus on. When everybody's going to do this, you're focused on opposite. And I'll give you a prime example. I picked an industry 20 years ago where I was just trying to be a salesperson, individual, me, myself, and I, right? And because the industry was very wealthy and the margin and commissions were wealthy, I started making 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 a year. I was able to sustain myself, live in a very wealthy uh, type of neighborhood, put my kids to the best schools, give my, kid the be my kids the best education, the healthcare plan possible with what I had because I picked an industry where X amount of sales would earn a six figure seven uh, uh, that would earn a six figure income. I wasn't thinking that big of making seven figures because I wasn't surrounded with the right people nor the right strategy. But because I picked the right industry, I was still making six figures. So the third point is here. Now you need the next 15 moves. You know, Patrick Ben David talks about, you know, a chess master knows a grand a grandmaster playing chess knows these next 15 moves. Amateurs know the three to next three to five moves, right? Beginners, five to ten moves. Uh, 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 experts, right, 10 to 15, but the grandmasters know the 15 to 20 moves. So if you wanna be a grandmaster in finance, you wanna become a millionaire with 500 bucks in less than three years, guess what you have to identify and start mapping out right now? You gotta identify your next 15 moves. I'll give you a couple examples. Number one, follow one who did it. Number two, find a blueprint. Find a proof of concept of how somebody made their million bucks. Number three, seek and choose and mentor. By the way, there's a ton of people out there right now that say, uh, how do I find a mentor? There's a ton of people out there. And don't think that making a million dollars is so way way out of left field that you can't, you can't find anybody that makes a million bucks. Matter of fact, becoming a millionaire today is, is more common and because of the economy that we're in right now, it's more easier than ever to become a millionaire. So they're out there. So all you gotta do then is seek ways to choose and, in, and incur the opportunity to get them to mentor you. Number four, what type of networking events do I need to go to? What type of conferences do I need to attend? What type of chambers of commerce do I need to attend on a weekly basis to shake hands and get the word out? What type of referrals do I need to start obtaining? What, what, type, of, what type of pitch, what type of skills do I need to make so therefore people feel encouraged to give me referrals? Number five, what type of skills do I need to acquire? What type of people skills do I need to acquire? What type of leadership skills do I need to acquire? What type of financial skills do I need to acquire? What type of sales skills do I need to acquire? So therefore I'm a lot more confident about what I'm doing and I'm more confident, I have more activity. When I have more activity, I get more results. So map those out. What type of skills do I need? And by the way, here's the cool thing about business, cool thing about entrepreneurship. Unlike a CEO or an athlete or an entertainer or an artist, these guys require tons of talent. But if you're finding a process and you're adopting a system, a proof of concept, guess what you need very little of? Talent. Listen, I've seen so many people in business with lacking, lacking this talent, but it's put so much effort into it, guess what they become? They become millionaires. So you don't need talent in the world of business. You need what? Work ethic. Are you willing to work towards it? Number six, accountability. What type of time frame am I willing to hold myself accountable to? Uh, on a weekly basis? 
daily basis, monthly basis, quarterly basis, semi-annual basis, yearly basis. Listen, there's a reason why publicly traded companies report their quarterly earnings because they feel a responsibility. They require a responsibility to show what their earnings are to their investors every quarter. So guess what you should be doing? If you are your own corporation, if you're a CEO, would you work for you? Would you, be, uh, would you hire you because you're organized? Would you hire you because you're showing accountability and reports that there's a responsibility of you to hold yourself accountable to your customers, to your business plan, to your financial future? Think about that. Number seven, support staff. What type of team do I need to hire? What type, do I need a receptionist to make sure I'm not picking up the phone? Do I need to hire a, an executive assistant? Do I need to hire a sales staff? Do I need to hire a marketing specialist? Do I need to hire a social media manager? What some of the sports staff do I need to hire? Uh, do I need to hire a CPA? So if I make money, I make sure I keep them, uh, the most of it. Do I need to hire attorneys? So therefore, when I'm building a business, people don't try to steal my idea. Do I need to copyright my stuff? When you're gonna start making money, people try to steal your idea. They try to sue you in court to slow you down. Do I, do I have an attorney in my back pocket so therefore they can play offense for me and be a mouthpiece for me so I can keep the main thing the main thing? What about my advisors? Are they part of my advisory board? Do I pay somebody to be part of my board? What's, what are the type of people that have been there, done that, and they have a financial interest to gain uh, a seat on my board? Maybe, you need, maybe those things you need to evaluate. Okay, how about number eight? Do I wanna approach my method and my math based on an individual basis? Guys, I mean, <laughs> I was able to sell in my industry and make six figures. No problem. There might be some industries out there you sell one or two things, you become a millionaire. Very rare, but you can become a millionaire. Now, those are far and few between. I found the greatest strategy, steps, in terms of building a team. There's a saying out there, if you wanna do it fast, do it yourself. But if you wanna go far, you wanna go, you wanna go deep, you build a team. So figure out if you wanna do it individually, or are you gonna increase your leadership and, and, and people skills so therefore you can build a team? So therefore you have many people lifting, uh, lifting up your, your business plan versus individually by yourself. Number nine, what systems and processes? What's my checklists? So therefore when I do something, when I sell something, when I, put, when, when I, when I pop up my, my display at a conference, when I go to a networking uh, event, when I go to a chamber of commerce, do I have systems and processes that I'm following to make my time well worth it? Or am I having to figure out from scratch all over again every time I do something again on a repetitive basis? Am I setting up, breaking down, setting up, breaking down, same old, same old, or do I have a system? Am I winging it and, and shooting it from the hip? Or do I have a specific target process on how to maximize the time of spending at these so-called events? So with that being said, these next steps for you, make your first $100,000, scale, make it to 250, scale some more, 500,000, scale some more, some more. Next thing you know, boom, you hit your million dollar income but you gotta figure out what the method and math and strategy you're going to use. My biggest advice on becoming a millionaire is two things. One is visualization, number two is environment. See, when I was broke, all I had was my visions, all I had was my dreams. And I had to learn to program myself. How do you program yourself? How do you program your mind? How do you program your thoughts and your actions and your habits? Well, one, it, it starts with reading the right books and having the right quotes and having the right affirmations. You have two people over here, Churchill and you have Buffett that the world knows. Uh, Church, uh, Churchill's got a quote that says that your greatest fears are created by your imagination. Uh, Buffett's got a quote here that says that um, someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. And there's numerous quotes that I have memorized because I've seen, I said them over and over and over again. And when I was new coming up, and I wanted to become a millionaire, I wanted to become successful. There were quotes by Theodore Roosevelt and Marianne Williamson that I would say to myself over and over again. And I would program myself and I would visualize myself one day being that person in that quote, one day having a breakthrough, one day having a lifestyle, one day dreaming, one day driving a Lamborghini and traveling the world, but I had to visualize that before I had it. It's a muscle, you gotta go out there and practice. So that's number one, you gotta go out there and work on that. Number two is the environment. You gotta, you gotta quickly, Get out of a comfortable environment, be part of an environment that's going to challenge you to grow, set aside your ego, be around people that are making a lot more money than you, that can mentor you and, and lead you in the right direction. If you find yourself in a room where you're the big shot and you're the most comfortable person in the room, guess what? You're going to be stuck. You're not going to get to the next level. Thank goodness I had a coach, I had a mentor by the name of Patrick who helped me get to where I'm at today, but it's always constantly challenging and improving and re being reminded of who you can become, reading the right books, being around the right associations and growing. 
And once you find yourself in a place where the environment is just casual, it's complacent, it's low standards, you're never gonna go out there and grow and become that person. So find a mentor that's making the money that you wanna make and make sure that you stay there and you keep on growing. And number number two, or the first one was visualizations. Visualizations and environment. There's millions of people out there that, that are wealthy and that are millionaires and you could be next. Hope that helped. All right, so as I wrap stuff up, today in America is one of the best times and more simple times to become a millionaire. Not only become a millionaire, but keep most of your money based on the tax package that we have currently right now under the Trump, uh, the Trump tax plan. I know you guys will give me some heat about that, but listen, many people in my position that are entrepreneurs are scaling up and out, know that they've made more money this year than last and are paying less taxes this year. So you gotta look at taxes as a compensation package. That's why you need the right CPAs and attorneys and people doing your taxes in your back pocket to make sure you, you make your money, you keep your money, so therefore you can reinvest it into scaling and creating more jobs. The next thing you have to ask yourself is, if I'm gonna be making a million dollars, do I have to constantly push buttons? Do I constantly have to have involvement? Do I have to have constant involvement to make sure I'm the, I'm, I'm the one always closing at the table? Do I have to be the person that's constantly making every decision along the way? Or do I have to build a team or a leadership team or a leadership group that's helping make these decisions pro properly and I can check in with them and they can check in with me vice versa? And also you have to ask yourself, okay, if I'm gonna make making a million dollars, what are some of the opportunities? Write down some of the opportunities for me to make a million dollars, vice versa too as well. What are some of the dangers do I have to anticipate to make sure if I make it, I keep it, I sustain it, and I scale it? And we'll wrap it up with this formula. And this formula, I'm making your million dollars with less than 500 bucks in three years. Number one, establish your why. Number two, what is your strategy? What is your method? Number three, what type of cash and capital do I have to obtain? Number four, what is the math? Am I gonna do it individually or am I gonna scale with the team or build a business out of this thing? Number five, what's my strategy? Number six, what's my outreach? Who do I need to talk to? Who needs to know what I do? Uh, how do I get the word out there? Number seven, what type of execution do I have to make sure I'm following? What methods do I have to follow? Which leads into number eight, what type of accountability based on my execution do I have to report? Because when performance is measured, performance improves. Number nine, mentorship. Who can be in my corner that's been there and done that? And do I have the honor and pleasure getting them to mentor me? And do I also choose, have the honor and pleasure to choosing that type of mentor too as well? And last but not least, number 10, review and adjust. Along the way, have a bunch of series of checkpoints. One of the things that we constantly do in my company, we're constantly having checkpoints, we're constantly having meetings, making sure that we can review and adjust, review and adjust. Because here's the thing that can get us quickly off course is life. Distractions can get us off course. The next thing you know, we pick our heads up three months later. Oh my gosh, we should have addressed that three months ago. Now we got to make up three months worth of lack of attention to detail. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Listen, I love your feedback. I love to, I love to know that some of you guys are declaring that Matt, with I got my 500 bucks in three years, I'm going to be making a millionaire. If that's you, please drop that comment below. Be bold, put yourself out there, hold yourself accountable to this community. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Seven Figure Squad. Make sure you click notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next video. And just know this, when we cross 10,000 subscribers, I'm so excited who's gonna be the first person to get this. This is my first big giveaway, but who's gonna be the first person once we cross 10,000 subscribers, who is going to win a custom pair of Air Jordans with your brand, with your logo on it, from me to you as a thank you for being part of the Seven Figure Squad community. But you gotta be a frequent commenter on my videos and we'll make sure we pay attention to who those are. So with that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.